Okay, now we're finishing up our final lesson here. We're going to talk about natural logarithms. Up to this point in um, the unit, we've, we've learned about the exponential function that has e as a base, the irrational number e. Now what we need to do is we need to take the inverse of that particular particular exponential function. And so if we do that by switching the x and the y and then taking the log with the same base, we end up with our x, our inverse, which is y equals log base e of x. Now what you really need to understand, and what you've probably seen on your calculator at this point, is that this log base e really means the same thing as ln, the natural logarithm. And so you've probably seen that a little bit in Math Excel. You've probably run across it on your calculator and really didn't know what it meant. And so now anytime you have a logarithm that has a base e, in place of that you can use ln. Okay, so now I'm going to just kind of show you an example of how they're similar. So if I do log with a base e, I'm going to get that base e out of this template box. And then I'm just going to use a random number. I'll just use 15 and I get 2.78. 2.708. Now I'm going to show you how the natural log, the ln, actually creates the same thing. And you can see that those are the same value. And so really now you can see in this concept box that, you know, an exponential function, the base e, has an inverse log, but instead of log base e, we use ln. And you can see the graphical representation of that. Again, 1, which is understood to be in front of the e value, is our y-intercept in the exponential function. And of course, the uh, symmetric over the diagonal shows that the x-intercept is 1, 0 for the, for the inverse. So let's take a look at sample problem number 1. We have a problem that asks us to simplify as a single natural logarithm. And so you've learned about log properties back in a previous lesson. So you can use all of the log properties and rules that you've come across in exponentials and logarithms to work with the natural log the same way. So go ahead and try sample problem number one. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this power and I'm going to go ahead and actually take that and change 15 squared to, it, to an actual number. So now we need to condense this. Simplify means condense. So we're going to simp condense it down to a single natural logarithm and since we have subtraction, that leads us back to division. And of course, we can simplify that value. And so we have a single uh, natural logarithm. All right, I'll stop right there. In the next video, we'll look at some sample problems involving natural logarithms and equations. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at some equations using natural logarithms or e as a base. Now, we've done, we've solved the, uh, logarithmic and exponential equations in prior lessons, and so all of the same situations can occur. You need to check for extraneous solutions. You need to maybe convert back and forth depending on what's given and or uh, whatever strategy that you're using to solve these. Except now we have one additional fact. We need to keep in mind that log base e is the same thing as the natural log. So sometimes if we need a base for our logarithm so that we can convert it to exponential function, we need to maybe remember that it's that we're re using a log base e. So work the sample problems if you haven't yet, and then take a look at the solutions. All right, so if we look at part a, um, we have the natural log here. And so I need to convert that. I have a logarithm on one side, not the other. And so I really need to convert that to exponential to make it an easier equation to solve. So the easiest way for me to do that is to just rewrite this back in terms of log base e. And now what I can do is I can use that little circular trick that we've been using to rewrite this. And so I'm going to have e to the fourth power equals x minus 3 squared. Now from here you might be tempted to take the fourth root to actually get e by itself but at this point, that's going to that's gonna leave us some difficulty on the right side of the equation. A better strategy is actually to take the square root of both sides. In doing so, I cancel out 
on the right side, I cancel out the square. On the left side, remember if we take the square root of e to the fourth, this is actually going to leave us a plus or minus e squared. And now I can just add 3 to both sides. Now that being the case, e squared is an actual number. You can punch that number into your calculator and you can either add it to 3 or you can subtract that from the given 3 value. So we need to go ahead and come up with those two approximate values. And you get roughly these values right here when you do that. Now if we take a look at this and it says x is a negative 4.3891. If you were to plug that back in, you would see that that value would actually be extraneous and could not work. So this value, and I would not plug it in as a decimal. If you want to go back and plug in the actual values, what I would do is I would actually plug in for x the, the exact values to see if it gives you a true or false statement. So what you'll see is that this is actually extraneous solution. All right, so moving down to part B, let's take a look at that. Now here we have an exponential equation with the exponent only on one side. So we're going to isolate that first and it's best to go ahead and reduce the fraction. Now we have a log, we have a base uh, on the exponent of E, so I need to convert this to a log. And of course, if I just did that according to my little rules here, I'm going to end up with log uh, with a base e. And of course, we know that's the natural log, and so you can write that as the natural logarithm. And I just went ahead and converted that 7 halves to a decimal just because it's a little easier to work with. And then x is going to be the natural log of 3.5 divided by 2. And again, if you just punch that in your calculator, you can get an approximate value and you can take it out as many decimal places as you need to. Again, if you want to check this, it would be best off to check it with the exact value for x to see if it works out for you and doesn't give you an extraneous solution. All right, so we'll stop right there and we'll take a look at the last couple sample problems in the next video. Okay, let's take a final look at one more equation and a word problem that you're probably familiar with at this point. All right, sample problem number three. Again, if you recall back from previous lessons, if we have a if we have a logarithm with the same base on each side of the equation, in effect, they end up canceling out. Now that's not exactly what's happening there, but you get that same you get that process that technically happens there. So we eliminate the logs and we're just left with the final parts there. So we have x squared equals 3x. Now to solve this, I want to get it all on the same side and then a simple factoring problem. Now, we get two possible solutions. Again, anytime that we have two solutions, you want to check for extraneous solutions. The first obvious one here is zero. If you actually tried to plug in zero into this, you would see that this is actually undefined in your calculator, so x equals a zero is actually extraneous solution. Three, uh, and you can check this on your calculator, works just fine, and it look, if you just look at the actual equation, it looks like it should work. All right, and then lastly, we have a compound interest formula. You can see that we're compounding continuously, and so you need to know that formula. And of course, it has a base of E in it. And this time it wants us to see how long it will take for the investment to grow to 20,000, so we're looking for a time and if we just simply work this out from here. Okay, and so I've set up this equation to equal to t, and if I punch all that in my calculator, I get roughly 10.181 years. Now, that's a perfectly acceptable answer given how the question was asked. How long would it take? If it asks us for how many years and days it would take, then at that point we would take the remaining part of this decimal and multiply it times 365, and that would tell us how many more days of that year till we finally had the doubling process completed. So just be real pay real close attention to what's being asked of you in the original problem. All right, that kind of concludes our lesson on natural logarithms.